Hello and welcome to this revision video on making and using flashcards. I want to say in particular a welcome to Year 8 students because this is the revision strategy which we are strongly suggesting to you this year to help you with your summative assessments. But of course you can use this strategy, making and using flashcards, in any year for any summative assessment or mock exam or GCSE exam that you are studying for. So it's not just for year eight, but we are launching it with you year eight as a strategy to build on what you did in year seven. So you can obviously continue still with that strategy, which you learned in year seven. I'm hoping that you remember that that was look, cover, write, check and correct. We did that methodology. You can try this methodology as well, this strategy for revising, which is all to do with flashcards. But also you can look at the other videos for the other year groups too. For example, there's one in year nine available to you as well, which you can use to help you use knowledge organisers as well. To start your revision using flashcards, you need to take a pack or a deck of flashcards. And my advice to you is try to pick a colour that you can easily associate with the contents of a particular topic or a subject. So for example, I'm going to pick green for science because in my head I associate biology, one of the sciences, with all things green, green plants, etc, etc. Choose a card that you can best associate with the knowledge that you are learning. The next thing that you need to do once you've chosen your cards is to take an exercise book or a revision guide, or for example, a knowledge organiser, and focus on one small section at a time. It's really important that you don't overload yourself with too much information all at once. Having chosen that small section, which you need to revise, you then need to read through the information first. Certainly no more than a page at a time. So I'm going to concentrate on this section here. Notes that I've made previously on poetry analysis. Then I select one piece of important or necessary information at a time and I then write it on my revision card. I'm always looking for clues from both the notes that I've made but also from the things that my teacher has signalled to me for what actually is important. And I know this is important because I did lots and lots of retrieval practice on it. So I can make an educated guess that this is important information which is probably going to be assessed in my summative assessment. It may or may not be, but it looks important. We spent a lot of time on it in class, therefore I'm going to make sure that I have a really good flashcard created on it. Really focusing in on, zooming in on this particular small section on this page in my exercise book, I'm now going to recreate some of the information from here onto my flashcard. Now it's really important that I copy down correctly the information in front of me because I can't take the risk of introducing errors from the page here onto my flashcard or else I might be revising the wrong thing. So I know that I need to know what a sonnet is and how many lines it has. That's how I can help myself to identify what it actually is. A sonnet has 14 lines. I wrote it here in a different colour so that it stands out and it was checked in the retrieval practice test in the lesson so I know that it's right. So I'm going to ask myself the question here, how many lines does a sonnet have? Then I double check the answer to make sure that it is correct, to make sure that I'm revising the correct thing and on the reverse I'm going to write down the answer, which is the number 14. 14 lines. Obviously you can include more information on one side of your flashcard than just a single question, but I think it's really important that you try to keep all of the key information together without overloading the flashcard either. You shouldn't have lots and lots of questions. 
on one side of the flashcard and lots and lots of answers on the other. It can be quite difficult then to learn the questions and the answers. But for example, I could then have asked myself an additional question about what an I am is, for example, and given the answer on the reverse, which is that it is a pair of syllables in which the second syllable is stressed. So I could add more to this particular flashcard if I wanted to, but try to keep the ideas on that flashcard connected to each other. The facts need to be linked to each other and also don't overload it with too much information. At the same time though, you can also include colour, you can also include images to really support your memorisation of both the questions and the answers at the back of the card which go with it. When you've been through your exercise book or revision guide or knowledge organiser section by section for the most important key information that you need to remember and learn, once you've done all of that and put them onto your flashcards, you're now ready to start using them. So how do you actually start using them? Well, you take up your card, you say out loud the question that you've got to answer. So for me earlier it was, how many lines does a sonnet have? I think the answer is 15. Am I right? I check the back. No, it's 14 lines. Right, so I've still not remembered that information, I've still not learned it. So what I would do with that card is I would put that card to the bottom of the pile that I've created for all of the other key information in that topic. I put it at the bottom to make sure that I can return to it later. If, however, I answered it correctly, I'd take that card and I'd put it to one side. That tells me that I know the question and the answer well enough just to put it onto one side for now. It's really important with this and any other revision that you do that you keep the time limits quite short. So as I've said in other videos for other activities, no more than 20 minutes at a time, asking yourself questions and checking your answers, no more than 20 minutes without taking short little breaks in between. Once you've been through your subjects or topics flashcards in 20 minutes, you will have two piles. I explained a few moments ago how you put onto one side the questions that you can answer and onto the other side the questions that you can't yet answer. So not forgetting these cards, the cards that you know the answers to, it's important that you spend a little bit more time now concentrating on the cards, the information on which you can't yet remember, which you've not yet learned. So you need to spend some time revising and reviewing those regularly until you know the information completely. A really good way to do that is to make sure that you are spacing out your retrieval of this information. So after you've made a set of flashcards, test yourself. How much do you remember the day after? How much do you remember seven days, a week later, after first making them and testing yourselves on them. And then try again 21 days or three weeks later. Can you remember the information still? I've mentioned this in other videos as well. This key idea, if you've not remembered something, you've not learned it. So you do need to make sure that you're also spacing out your retrieval practice of this particular revision method using flash cards. Once you can recall the information instantly, and by that I mean at a flash, that's why we call them flash cards, once at a flash you can see the question and know the answer really well, then you can remove that card from the pack completely when you are revising them. But do pay particular attention to begin with to those questions that you know you're struggling to answer. I've just explained to you how to use flashcards in a really simple, basic, but effective way. But there are other ways in which you can use flashcards to really deepen your knowledge and see connections between topics. So, for example, you could make sure that all of your flashcards on a certain topic area are grouped together. So, for example, 
all of the ways in which I need to know how to solve equations I could put together and make sure I'm really deepening my knowledge by working only on that for a short burst of time to really deepen my knowledge of that particular topic area. So that's one thing that I could do. I could group the cards together and practice, practice, practice until I'm getting that area 100% correct. In other subject areas I could use them to help me perhaps bring all of the information together that I need to do a practice essay question for example as well. You can also use them to create a mind map as well. So, for example, on this piece of paper here, I've got my flashcards on solving equations, which I know I need to learn for my summative assessment. And also, I've got my flashcards on angles, which I also need to learn for my summative assessment. Now, I can create a mind map here by placing all of the cards on a piece of paper and making connections between them because there are certain things that I need to know first about how to solve equations before I can then attempt to work out which um, is the unknown angle, for example, in mathematics. So I can use this quite interactively, lay them out and see the connections between them. And me being able to narrate, which means to talk through those connections, is another way of me proving to myself that I can see how all of this knowledge is connected and interconnected and how it supports other knowledge around the subject area from one topic to another. It's a really good way of taking control of your learning, seeing those connections. So you can use your flashcards not just to test yourself or to test others, but as a great way of laying out as much information as possible and trying to see the connections sequentially between them. You can also use various online tools as well. There are websites out there such as Quizlet which allows you to make your own flashcards online. You can write the questions in, set the answers and then test yourself on um, those answers and that will come up uh, in front of you on the screen electronically. Or you can use other websites as well. There are other websites out there which can help you create virtual flashcards. And what's really good about that is you can um, compete with yourself, you compete with other people in our school, but you can also potentially compete uh, nationally and internationally by answering questions on preset things, topics on those websites. So it's a really good interactive way using online methods as well to support you with your flashcards. Finally, I've already mentioned this but I just want to emphasise as well, revision should be, because it's about learning, it should be fun and you can make it as interactive as possible as well in the old fashioned way by getting friends, family members to ask you questions and also then to uh, test you on your answers. Another way of doing the knowledge is to give the answer but can you think of the question that goes with it. It's really important that you know this knowledge every which way so that it's really and truly embedded into your memory. Having spent some time learning how to learn, learning how to revise using this particular strategy, all that's left for me now to say to you, each and every one of you, is regardless of what you are revising for, it could be a summative assessment, a mock exam, or your real life GCSEs, all I want to say to you on behalf of all of the senior leadership team and the school is best of luck to you. We know that through doing what it takes for as long as it takes, showing commitment to your revision, you will absolutely enjoy and experience success both now and in the future. Bye and good luck.